Good morning. Uh, my name is Christopher Dunphy. I'm with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. I'm a principal planner there and uh, I primarily assist a lot of towns within our region with the administration of the Community Development Block Grant Program. So I'm here at the Hadley Council on Aging to talk about uh, an application that we are getting ready to prepare um, uh, that will perhaps bring funds to this community to assist people with housing rehabilitation. Another project we're looking at uh, involves the Russell School, uh, which I understand is presently vacant, and we'll be pursuing funds to do a feasibility study for uh, the school's reuse. And lastly, um, the town is in need of what we call a transition plan. A transition plan uh, identifies uh, the, the, the properties that are town owned in the community and examines them for accessibility compliance and with the idea that uh, a plan would be prepared that will help the town uh, transition these public buildings and spaces into compliance regarding accessibility. So those are three projects that the, the town of Hadley will be pursuing through this community development block grant program. Uh, this is a, a federal program. It actually initiates from HUD and uh, funds are then passed through the state and the state offers communities such as Hadley uh, an opportunity to participate in a competitive grant application and this year the grant is due on March 6th. So uh, my role will be working with uh, various community officials and preparing this application and uh, seeing if we could not obtain some funds to again uh, obtain funds for housing rehabilitation uh, an accessibility ADA plan and a reuse plan for uh, Russell School. Now I know uh, most people um, there's a strong interest in housing rehabilitation. I think it's been several years since the town of Hadley has been able to obtain funds for, for housing rehabilitation. Now uh, this housing rehabilitation program is, is based uh, on um, people who qualify based on income. Okay, and we use a, a what they call 80% of median income to qualify. And uh, for example, a household of one, the current uh, uh, qualifying income level is around $49,000. And for a household of two, it would be sliced slightly higher. And for a household of three, so on and so forth. So for those that have housing needs, uh, such as roofs, siding, weatherization, uh, perhaps some foundation repair, septic systems, water wells, uh, this is the program that can help you. And uh, it's a very popular program. And um, there are people, uh, I, we have someone in the audience here today that's been waiting for assistance for several years. So we're, we're very much hoping we could, we could obtain this grant and be able to assist those that, who need this type of assistance, uh, housing rehabilitation. So approximately up to, well not approximately, up to $40,000 can be made available should Hadley uh, obtain this grant. And uh, again, these are for things uh, that are addressing building code. Uh, we don't do renovations, nor do we do expansions. This is a housing rehabilitation program. Again, focused on state sanitary code issues. Again, roofs, windows, siding, weatherization, electrical, plumbing, things of that nature. And these are loans that are zero percent? So um, what the state does is they like to be able to provide these uh, funds on what we call uh, anti-speculation and a recapture plan. So um, I'm going to hold up this chart here, which we're going to refer to, okay? The anti-speculation part is uh, they want to initiate the the, the, the funds as what they call a deferred payment loan, okay? So it's a 15-year deferred payment loan, okay? So they, they structure it this way so people don't uh, obtain these funds to sell their house. That's the anti-speculation part. They don't want people to obtain these public funds, improve their homes to sell. They want people to, to obtain these funds so they can live there in a safe and healthy manner. Okay, that's the anti-speculation part. And the recapture part is the 15-year deferred payment loan. So over this 15 years, 
there are no payments to this program and uh, as long as you remain in home in the home for the 15 years over time that loan or, or lien will go down and at the end of the 15 years it becomes zero so that's the deferred part okay and again there are no payments over this uh, 15 year period uh, and over time uh, the loan becomes deferred so at the end of the 15 years it becomes a, an outright grant okay so recognizing this is critically important for uh, like many of our seniors uh, working with the town and, and this is what we do with many other towns that that have the same sort of similar program uh, we, we've made a recapture rate different for seniors in that it would go down much more rapidly as you'll see as an example after eight years we're down to 10 percent after after 10 uh, after 11 years we're down to five percent and then so on, and, and that will be until the loan is finished out five percent five percent five percent so it, you know if you get a thirty thousand dollar loan as, a, as an example to, to fix a roof or, or you have some windows installed so after 11 years you're down to five percent and after 15 years it's, it's completely gone the, the lien is eradicated and it's taken off the books and that's something that's actually filed with the Registry of Deeds and uh, we're, we are notified if someone does happen to have to sell okay their, their property within that period during the closing the lawyer will call our office and ask what the balance is and we'll, we'll provide that figure and then that amount is recaptured by the town actually not us by the town will help recapture those funds for the town and hopefully reapply it for other people that need help. So that's how the housing rehab program works. Uh, we've been doing this for many, many years for many towns throughout the region. We have a qualified pool of, of contractors that have their uh, home supervisor's license. They have insurance. Uh, they've been vetted in that they do similar type of projects. Um, uh, should we get this grant, again, I'm going to go back a little bit. The grant is due on March 6th, okay? And uh, the town of Hadley will probably become aware if they've been awarded the grant maybe by July. And by the fall of 2020, we'll be able to, to begin uh, taking full applications in and then hopefully being able to provide some assistance. So um, that's sort of the nature of the program. We have a housing, we have two housing rehabilitation specialists on staff uh, that would meet with the homeowner. Uh, the homeowner will discuss some of what his or her needs are and then our rehab specialist will also look and see what other things in the house are not up to code. And between two, the homeowner and the rehab specialist, we arrive at a scope of work. And that scope of work is, is bid to uh, three to five contractors and then, and then we move on from there. So a typical, typical project usually will last uh, three months. Uh, there is a requirement for homes that are uh, built before 1978 to undergo a lead inspection. So we know uh, before 1978 there was lead, lead in uh, the paints that were used in many of our homes. So as a requirement for the program, houses that are a little bit older, 1978 or before, will have to undergo a lead paint inspection and there may need to be some funds applied to uh, eliminating or, or, or at least encapsulating whatever lead is found in that home. So uh, it's a great program. Um, you know, it's a competition here, uh, so we don't know if Hadley is going to be successful. Um, we're going to try our best. So we're here today to try and uh, inform people of what we're up to. We're trying to demonstrate that there's a need and a demand for this program which will help me in our grant writing efforts to, to, to inform the state, yes, there are people in Hadley that can use these funds. We've gotten uh, uh, some, uh, some forms back from homeowners. This has been circulating throughout the town. It was recently, uh, can you get that okay? It was recently in the paper, okay? And this form is to help me show the state and the readers of this grant application that there are people that are interested. They have signed up and they are on our waiting list. 
So that's the need, uh, the purpose of this form that's been circulating. It's not a, an application. It's just an interest form, if you will, at this point in time. And if we collect them, we'll, we'll, we'll develop a list. And then when the time comes, we'll, 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 we'll address that list. So there are a couple of people here uh, uh, listening to this presentation. Um, I can answer questions if you might have some. Maybe I might have forgotten something. Uh, it would be a good time for us to, to um, anyone? Yeah, I got a question. Sir. Because uh, I checked uh, about this in the past, and they usually like to have three estimates uh, on a, a job. Uh, so would it be up to the homeowner to go finding somebody to give you an estimate? Some, some are willing to give you a free estimate, and some might charge you a minimum amount, or is it, uh, is it the PV, what is it, Pioneer Valley? Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Yeah, is so it I mentioned, to, I, I mentioned that we have a qualified pool of contractors. What we'll do is, is when the time is, comes, uh, we're going to develop a scope of work with our rehab specialist, okay. and then we'll invite three to five contractors to visit the home and actually bid on it. So, uh, so uh, maybe, maybe uh, that's what you confused the you're, estimate. You're already, you already have a list of contractors that are available to do the work. You, I don't have to go out. That's and correct. I'm looking for people because I like got an estimate, say, for roofing from uh, uh, Quenville or something. Yeah. But I don't know if that's somebody well, that's on your Mr. list. Mr. Quenville, I forgot what his uh, actual Adam company. Quenville. Yeah, yeah. He's not presently on our list. Uh, we'll take applications if people or, or if there's contractors out there that are that might be watching um, We'd certainly be happy to take applications for many qualified contractors that would like to be on our list But we do have a, a list okay. and we do go by that list and then uh, At least five three to five people from that list will be invited to bid on the project Okay, okay so I and we'd like to have this is where you might get confused. So we'd like to have at least three that right. actually do present a bid to, a to show competition. Variation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I did have an individual that's kind of in business for himself give me an estimate, and it was basically the same thing as Adam Quenville. He gave me like a $2,000 estimate, and that was uh, like two years ago. Mm -hmm. I said, well, are you going to still charge me the same amount? He said yes, but uh, maybe a Quenville would make it higher because it was an older estimate and everything everything goes up in price there so what they give you a price a year or two ago might not be the same market conditions change yeah. that's true we we have no way of knowing what the market will be uh, in the fall when this program launches but uh, I'm hoping that you can hang in there and, and wait for the program to become available so we can assist you through this program um, you know if you qualify so this individual, though, should I, if I see him, t uh, tell him to contact you and put his name on the list? Possibly? Sure, we'd be happy to take names from contractors that are qualified. They have the requisite insurance. They have their home uh, construction supervisor's license. I'm not and sure if this guy has home. all that. Yeah. He's kind of just one of those yeah. that does odd, odd jobs. He yeah. kind of does odd jobs. Well, probably not the contractor that would be for this program, a general contractor might be able to take on this individual yeah. as as a sub or a okay. worker, but we take applications from general contractors that are qualified. Okay. So uh, just a little bit more background about the Community Development Block Grant Program. It's a federal program. Again, it initiates from HUD, Housing and Urban Development. Every year, Congress convenes and, and they negotiate and arrive at a, a national budget for the Community Development Block Grant Program, which started in the early 1970s. And I think the national budget is maybe around three and a half, four, four billion dollars, I think. And largely, much, most of these funds are, are uh, dispersed to what we call entitlement cities by a formula. So some of the larger cities automatically get these funds. And once the disbursement has gone to these entitlement cities, uh, what remains goes to state governments and they allow, it's the state governments, in this case, the Department of Housing and Community Development, which we'll, who will be applying to, and the, the DHCD, the Department of Housing and Community Development, puts together the, the competitive 
uh, program available for small towns such as Hadley. So that's where we come in, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commissions. I guess you could say we're sort of experts in putting together these applications. We've been very successful with many of the communities throughout the region, and I'm certainly hoping we can be successful for Hadley. So that, uh, yes ma'am. I've got a couple questions. Did I understand correctly that the rate that the recapture rate for the loan for older adults, people over 60, I, I think, is goes down more rapidly than people under that age? That's correct. So for seniors, it, it goes down quite a bit rapidly. So uh, in year two of the loan period, as an example, uh, for, for non-seniors, uh, the recapture would be 90%, whereas for seniors, it's 75 for year three, for non-seniors, it's 80%, whereas for seniors, it's 60%, and so on okay. and so forth. So, so the, the, the great thing about this recapture plan for seniors is, is I think, to point out, is after eight years, you're down to 10%. So, right. you know. But is it a 15-year term it, for, for both for both seniors both. and non-seniors? It's so a 15 year, yeah. 15. So that's the anti-speculation part. Right. The state insists that we structure these as 15-year deferred payment loans so people just don't take the monies and prove their homes and yeah. sell them yeah. right it's it's so people can remain in their homes sure okay um, I'm also wondering if you have a sense of how many interest forms it'll take to demonstrate need in Hadley well I'd like as many interest forms as for the amount of projects that we'll be seeking and I think we'll be seeking funding for at least a dozen mm -hmm. so I'm hoping we'll get at least mm -hmm. a dozen mm -hmm if not twice as many right. interest forms yeah, the because the uh, it's yeah. been my experience uh, 20, 25, 30 people may uh, come forward and submit an interest form but when the time comes to actually apply for whatever reason they, they may have resolved their, their, their housing issue they may have moved uh, or once they hear all the details they decide it might not be a program for them so we'd like to get uh, you know a good uh, excess in the amount uh, of interest forms than from the actual amount of units that we'll be seeking. So I'm hoping we'll be seeking uh, funding for at least a dozen units. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, so I'm hoping we'll, we'll, we'll see at least 20 plus interest forms. Okay. Mm. And do I remember correctly that landlords of, um, that the people who own homes that are, that are divided into rental properties are also eligible for this program? That's correct. I didn't get into any detail regarding that, but we call those investors. Okay. So we have owner-occupied mm -hmm. properties, people that own and live there, and investor owners. Now, uh, the, the program is uh, available for investor owners, but for investor owners, we ask for a match. Uh, some skin in the game, if you will. Okay. So an investor would like uh, some assistance to, to improve a property that he, uh, she, you know, uh, that is being rented. We'll ask for a 25% match of the overall project cost from the investor to improve that property uh, for his or her tenants. And it's his or her tenants that will have to be uh, income qualified. Right. Not so the investor, it's the tenants, the people who live there. The program's designed to benefit the people who are living in the properties. That's great. And I had another question. Um, and is the loan amount greater for people who are going to ha have to seek some abatement for hazardous materials? It could very well be. Uh, you know, if there's lead paint that's identified, uh, depending on where it is, whether it's a friction surface or whether it's exterior paint, uh, we'll have to address it. And it, it, there are a lot of different nuances and details when it comes to resolving the issues of lead paint. In some instances, uh, uh, paint can simply be encapsulated. Mm -hmm. You know, in other instances, it will have to be removed or covered. So there, there's a, it's quite a complex thing uh, addressing the issues of lead paint. And, uh, but yes, it, it could add to increased cost, overall cost for a project, okay. uh, which would be covered by the grant, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, again, the lien would be also impacted as well by the abatement of any lead paint. Did you say that the grant amount is around 40,000? Up to 40,000. Up 40, to 40, yep. Okay. So that doesn't mean, uh, you know, if a person comes in can, should assume that they're getting 40,000, you know. It's an up to amount based on what's identified for issues that are not up to code. Okay, it's, again, it's not, a, it's not a renovation program. 
It's, it's not a, uh, an ex a home expansion program. It's a rehabilitation program, hopefully trying to identify uh, folks in the community that need it most. No, you said that they won't really know until the 4th of July, is that what you said? I didn't say the 4th, I said sometime in July, okay, maybe. Okay, I was thinking of the 4th of yeah, July. Yeah. But sometime in July they'll have a definite answer whether it's... The town will no be notified first, actually, not, not even me, but your, 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 your Board of Selectmen will probably receive a, an award letter or, okay. a, or a notice that they weren't funded. You know? So uh, you, you really won't know until July? Basically. That's correct. And the other question I had, uh, as you said, uh, seniors, so I'm older than my wife, I'm 70, and she's, I think, 57. Is she classified as a senior? If there's a senior living in the home, it would apply, that oh, okay. rate would apply. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, she could be classified as a senior according to AARP. Yeah, but I think I have an AARP card as well. I haven't so. got a card, <laughs> but uh, they start sending information mm -hmm. when you're in your 50s. Yeah. So if there is a senior living in the home, the faster recapture rate would apply. Oh, okay. So again, uh, so we talked a lot about housing rehabilitation, but I, I also want to say one more time, these two other projects are, are critically important as well. Uh, a transition plan is actually uh, something that was a requirement with the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act in, in the 90s. And many towns have, have done them and some, some have not. But uh, the, the point of Hadley getting one done, it would uh, then put you, the community, in a position to qualify for other grants to actually address the issues of, of accessibility. So um, again, if, if this grant is funded, the, this uh, ADA transition plan will, will hire a, a professional consultant whose expertise in, is in the area of accessibility and will examine all the, the public buildings and, and outdoor spaces and see what n might not be up to 100% compliance and, and actually outlay in a plan, outlay of plan which will help bring these uh, properties into full compliance. And hopefully there will be grant monies to, to address them in the future. And in terms of Russell School, we're just uh, having some preliminary discussions about that. Um, but the, the idea is to do a reuse study, again, with a professional consulting firm working with the town to see uh, what might be some, some good opportunities uh, uh, for reuse of that building, whether it's housing or, or well, basically whatever the community feels, you know. And it's just a feasibility study. There has been no uh, uh, decided uh, plans on what that reuse should be. So that, that's the purpose of the plan. Chris. So yes. For the, in the transition plan, are, spa are, are public spaces that aren't buildings considered? Like yes, parks? parks. But I would say we wouldn't be interested in uh, open space where there's no real defined use. But mm -hmm. if there's a park where it might need walkways, might, yeah, walkways or, or some parking spots and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So yes, absolutely. Parks, playgrounds, mm -hmm. um, and public buildings. Great. All right, I want to thank uh, Hadley and the Council on Aging for, for inviting me here today. My name is Christopher Dunphy, Principal Planner of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. My number, if anyone would like to call me, is 413-781-6045. Thank you very much.